Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Unit 2, Lesson 4, Proportional Relationships and Equations. After this lesson, you need to be able to write an equation of the format y equals kx to represent a proportional relationship described by a table or story. And you need to be able to write the constant of proportionality as an entry in a table. You'll know you're successful after this lesson if you can write an equation for a proportional relationship as y equals kx and write the constant of proportionality as part of a table. First, let's look at representing our constant of proportionality. If you remember from previous lessons, the constant of proportionality is that number that you are multiplying by to keep equal ratios throughout your table. So here we have a problem. At Coffee House, the coffee is brewed at a constant ratio. If they want four cups of brewed coffee, they need to use two tablespoons of coffee grounds. How can this be represented for any amount of coffee? So any, not just the ones that are in the table. So four cups, we know that has to be equal to two tablespoons. So the first thing I want to do is figure out my constant of proportionality. Again, to do that, I'm going to take my end, what's on the right, and divide that by my start, or what's on the left. So in this case, it would be 2 over 4, 2 divided by 4. We can reduce that to a fraction of 1 half, or you could divide it out and have 0 0.5. I'm going to leave it as 1 half, so my constant of proportionality for this table is going to be 1 half. So I'm going to multiply everything by 1 half. So 3 times 1 half is 1.5. 1 times 1 half is 1 half. 9 times 1 half is 4 and a half, 4.5. But what about the last one, C? Well, think about what I had to do to every other number to, from the left to get the one on the right. I just had to multiply it by our constant of proportionality. So if I do C times 1 half, I end up with my number of coffee grounds. So 1 half C. So whatever C was, I multiply that by half, and I end up with half of C. The number that's in front of my variable is my constant of proportionality, and then C is just going to be how many ever cups that I want. So if I wanted to know an unknown, very large number of cups, whatever that is, I just have to multiply it by half, and I will get my number of coffee grounds. Let's look at another example. A lemonade flavored drink is made in a specific ratio of powder, lemonade mix, and water. For every three parts of water, it requires one-fourth parts of lemonade mix. So. In our table, we are shown as parts. So I know that if I want one-fourth parts of lemonade mix, the problem tells me that there are three parts of water. Again, to figure out my constant of proportionality, I'm going to do my end divided by my start. So three divided by one-fourth. Remember, when you are dividing fractions, okay, you keep change, flip. So I'm going to keep the top, I'm going to change to multiplication, and I'm going to flip the bottom fraction. So 1 fourth becomes 4 over 1. Then I can multiply it out. 3 times 4 is 12, and then 1 on the bottom times 1 becomes 12 over 1, or just 12. So our constant of proportionality here is 12. We are multiplying by 12. So in my next row, if I had two parts of lemonade, I would have to multiply it by 12, my constant of proportionality, and that will tell me how many parts of water I need. 
So 2 times 12 is 24. If I only had one part, I would need to multiply by 12 and I would get 12. In the last row, I don't know how much mix I want, but if I want to figure out how much water I need, I would just multiply it by 12, so I would end up with 12m. Another way to think about this is that the amount of water that you need is your mix times 12. Okay, so I could write this as an equation saying W, water, would be equal to 12 times M or just 12M, where 12 is our constant of proportionality. Let's look at it going the other direction. So we still have three parts of water to one-fourth parts of lemonade mix. I'm going to plug in my one-fourth since that's what it tells us. So three parts of water to one-fourth parts of lemonade mix. To find our constant of proportionality this time, we still do the end divided by the start. So this time, it's one-fourth divided by three. And if I'm dividing with fractions, I'm still keeping the top, changing it to multiplication, flipping the bottom. So keep the top, change to multiplication, flip the bottom. So three becomes one over three. Multiply across, one times one is one, four times three is 12. So my constant of proportionality this time is 1 12th. Again, that means I'm multiplying my water times 1 12th, and that will tell me my lemonade mix. 24 times 1 12th becomes two. 12 times 1 12th becomes one. And then if I don't know the amount of water, but I want to figure out my lemonade mix, I'm going to take the amount of water, W, multiply that by 1 12th. So 1 12th W. This time, the mix is equal to the water times 1 12th, or M equals 1 12th W. And again, our number in our equation is our constant of proportionality. So this time it was 1 12th. Our constants of proportionality in the previous page, it was 12, and this time it's 1 12th. So again, going from one to the other, so the first time we went from mix to water, we multiplied by 12. Now going backwards from water to mix, it's the reciprocal, 1 12th. We could have used that information from the beginning, but here's another proof of how that works. Now let's look at the equations that we came up with at the end of each of those two examples. They were both in the format of y equals kx. There is a hidden multiplication in there, which is why we were able to go from 12 times x to just 12x. So in the same situation, I can go kx, which is the same as k times x. So if you see the k and the x, it means k multiplied by x, or just kx. k is your constant of proportionality. So in the water to mix example, the first time we figured out that our constant of proportionality was 12, the second time we figured it out that it was 1 over 12. Either way, k, that number, is your constant of proportionality for the equation. Your x is your input, or what did you start with? In the table, the input is on the left. The y value of your equation is your output, or what you end up with. In our table, our y value was the right side of our table. So in the last example, that was your lemonade mix. We can plug in x as our start and y as our output, as shown in our table here. And what happens, in order to figure out what y is, we take x and we multiply it by k, our constant of proportionality. And we end up with our equation, y is equal to x times k. Or if we rewrite it, y equals kx. In this lesson, we learned how to write equations from tables. Now, here we're given an example of red paint in parts and blue paint in parts. If you look in the last row of the table, it says if we know the amount of red paint needed, R, 
We just have to multiply it by 4 to find the blue paint, which was B. If we wanted to write an equation for that, we would say the blue paint was equal to 4 times the red paint. So red paint times 4 equals blue paint. So B equals 4R. In this situation, our constant of proportionality would be 4 because that's what we needed to multiply to go from the amount of red paint to the amount of blue paint. We could have also looked at it the other way around. If we knew how much blue paint we needed and wanted to figure out how much red paint we needed, we would have the reciprocal constant of proportionality. If we wanted to figure out R, we would have to take B and multiply it by 1 fourth. So R would be equal to 1 fourth B. Our constant of proportionality here would have been the reciprocal of what it was before. It would be now 1 fourth. In general, we can say that our equation is going to be y equals k times x, where k is your constant of proportionality in the situation. So after this lesson, do you now know how to write an equation for a proportional relationship as y equals k times x? And can you write the constant of proportionality as part of the table? If you're not sure, go back and rewatch parts of this video to deepen your understanding. And that's the end of lesson four.